for possible coverage. I appreciate it. Got it. Hey, Eddie. Good morning. How are you, Jim? I'm well, thanks. No, I do have a rooster. I do have a rooster that hasn't caught the, or is a little bit late on his clock. Uh, so if you see me mute myself, <laughs> you, you know why, but it won't be temporary. Not a problem. One of my favorite animals. Well, there you go. Just so that everyone is aware, we are now streaming to YouTube. Thanks, Aileen. Well, it's 1031. Are, are we ready to go? Um, Raisa, are you ready? Um, okay, so I would like to, I'll, I'll call the meeting to order. And um, Raisa is going to um, read a statement on how the, the community can become involved in this uh, meeting today. Alrighty, good afternoon, council members. Um, so due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders, and, uh, which suspend certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the health officer of the county of Sonoma to shelter in place, the economic development subcommittee is of course conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting. Uh, members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website, srcity.org. Um, and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item three, public comment, or during our public hearing items will be able to do so by utilizing the raise hand feature their hand, uh, to raise their hand or pressing star nine on their phone. Uh, they then uh, will be given the ability to address the committee. And that is the statement. Thank you very much. Thanks, Raisa. And, um, Eileen, could you call the roll, please? Council Member Alvarez? Present. Council Member Fleming? Here. Council Member Sawyer? Here. Let the record reflect that all subcommittee members are present. Thank you very much. Raisa, would you like to, to, to want to show the, um, um, the, the agenda? Um, I only have one screen this morning, so um, I'm a little a little bit at a loss. Unless you want us to announce the first agenda item, that would be that would be adequate as well. Here, the first thing though is uh, public comments. Um, so, okay. Yeah, asking if there's on, any public on, comments. Thank you. Public comment on items not on the agenda. Um, and Eileen, can you let the community know how they can uh, communicate with this subcommittee on items not on the agenda? I can read that out for you. Um, oh, so, thanks, Raisa. Um, sure, if you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. And please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so and your microphone will be uh, muted at the end of that countdown. Excellent, thank you very much. And um, Eileen, do we have any public comment at this point? There are no raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll move on with the agenda. Um, Raisa, can you um, indicate the first item on the agenda? Sure, the first item is the temporary paid sick leave. The continuation of the discussion. I don't know why I'm laughing about it, but anyway, it's a. Well, it's, it's a been going on for. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's been an active com uh, conversation, so that's I, I can understand. Um, it's a, it's important, yet it has has been uh, moving along, and we're getting closer and closer to some decision making. So thank you very much. Sure. Um, well so we have um, a presentation that I just put together. Um, if Eileen can put that on, so uh, it'll help us uh, lead through the, um, the discussion points and the questions that we're gonna be answering today. Um, so uh, if I may, Council Member Sawyer, jump right in. Are you okay with that? Absolutely, please, thank you. 
Okay, next slide, please, Eileen. Uh, oh, next slide. Um, okay, so what this I wanted to do is just really a comparison of the issues that we're um, addressing uh, today, because um, if you recall the, um, sorry, I need to just look for my notes real quick. Um, if you recall the conversation we had last week, um, we landed on a few questions that are still um, outstanding, but I wanted to give you just sort of a simple comparison of um, the, uh, what the federal act, the um, Emergency Paid Sick Leave Act um, under the Families First Coronavirus uh, Relief Act, I think it was called FFCRA, um, did compared to what uh, we did locally. Um, and the main issues are um, whether we want to cover over 500 employees or under 500 employees. So the FFCRA covered, um, required of employers with, five, with 500, I'm sorry, with less than 500 employees to um, provide up to two weeks of sick leave, 80 hours of sick leave, um, so long as they were subject to the quarantine order from you know, the state or county, local jurisdiction, um, so long as they had been advised to quarantine by a healthcare provider, um, if they were experiencing symptoms of, um, of COVID-19, um, or if they were caring for an individual who was subject to an order of, of one or two above, or for a child um, whose school or place of care is closed due to COVID-19. Um, these last two are fairly important because what the Santa Rosa ordinance did, as you recall, is we included employers of 500 or more employees, which were not covered under the FFCRA. Um, healthcare providers and emergency responders were also not included. So we included, or they were optional. We made them mandatory. Um, we removed the lower uh, cap limit. There was a lower cap limit for people caring for a child whose uh, place of business was, uh, clo uh, whose childcare was closed, um, and also for um, caring for an individual subject to uh, of the order, so someone other than yourself. So the cap limit is the bit, one of the biggest things that changed. Um, and um, the other thing that changed is um, we sort of expanded four and five, making it that anybody um, who's uh, caring for somebody whose uh, uh, place of care is closed due to COVID would be covered under this act. Um, and um, the only way to, this is enforceable is not through the city, but uh, an employee would have to bring an action to the superior court. Um, I hope that wasn't too confusing, but I just wanted to highlight the things that were, and that we added to the Federal Act. Uh, next slide. Um, the other thing is, so uh, mentioning, uh, I mentioned the um, caps that we had. So again, if you're caring for yourself, the um, the Federal Act had a higher cap of $511 a day. Um, again, I just want to say that most people, um, what they get paid falls under this cap. It's something like $65 an hour you'd have to make or over in order to exceed this cap. Um, and then the Federal Act, again, had that um, smaller um, cap for caring for somebody else, including your child. Um, what the city, uh, the city did is we eliminated this lower cap. So we had only that $511 cap um, for everybody. Uh, next slide. Um, and um, is there one slide above? Can you go back one slide? Uh, the federal law one. Um, That one, okay. So, um, so when we're considering this, um, what I want to make sure that you understand, because we're going to go through some options here again, is that the federal law tax credit ended up being a, a large part of our discussion last Tuesday. Um, and so, for clarity, um, the anybody, any employer um, subject to this, the only employers who get a tax credit are those who are covered under the federal act. So, um, and only at the caps that were allowed by the federal, the federal act. Um, and at this point, the only part of the federal act that was 
uh, extended um, is the tax credit only up until March 31st of this year. Um, there is uh, a proposal by Biden, he put together the American Rescue Plan. Um, and in that proposal, he is stating that, stating that he would reinstate paid sick leave and the family leave benefits up until um, September 30th of this year. Um, uh, and he's looking to close the gaps that the city did through our local ordinance, um, providing up to 14 weeks of reimbursement um, for, uh, for the businesses less than 500. Um, the reason I bring this up is because when we talk about um, what we want to do in our next phase, um, this may come into play uh, and address the very things that we're trying to do in our, um, in our local ordinance. The issue is that we don't know how soon this item will be taken up. Um, and how extensive it'll, it'll be. So uh, next slide, please. And so with that, what I wanted to do is go through the areas which I thought we had some questions about um, at the end of uh, Tuesday's meeting, um, and then also ask any additional questions that, we, that you may have uh, related to this. So one of the big questions was the option for an expiration date. When we met on Tuesday, there was a lot of discussion and we did not come to that I could tell any conclusion on what um, what a good expiration date would be, or there was no consensus, I should say. Um, the, the options range from uh, having an expiration date on our ordinance of March 31st, which would be consistent with the um, federal tax credit. Uh, the other one was that was brought up was uh, June 30th, the end of the fiscal year. Uh, and then um, I proposed to that uh, because there was a question of could we do it with no sunset and then just keep checking in, um, we could potentially offer, uh, for example, a uh, March 31st deadline and then um, offer to tie it to uh, should the federal government uh, extend it either to September or make it permanent, we could tie it to whatever the federal government does. Um, the other thing that was a, a question was the inclusion of employers in less than 500. I think I heard most people say that they want to include the people other than uh, less than 500 employees. Um, this would be an expansion of our ordinance, of course. Um, and in speaking with uh, members of the Chamber of Commerce, the Santa Rosa Metro Chamber, um, this would be acceptable if linked to the tax credit. Um, so employers with less than 500 employees would get the one-for-one -one tax credit at that tiered rate that we discussed. Um, Grace, other, yeah, I'm sorry. Can I interrupt you just briefly? You know, sure. what, what I, I mean, it, what people say and what one, what one hears sometimes is different. But what I, what I heard, the, I believe I heard the majority of the council and and uh, council members. Please correct me if I'm wrong. That there was a high level of um, uh, satisfaction with the March 31st because of that, as, as long as it, because it was tied with the tax credit. Um, is that what the what, what you two council members heard during last Tuesday's meeting? Because that's that's what I heard is there was there was a high level of importance tying that tying the tax credits with the um, uh, the March thirty first deadline. You know, um, council member Sawyer, I'm not exactly sure. I was so focused on the details of this that I don't recall exactly what the consensus was. I remember that I was in support of its expiring on March 31st, provided that we had something else ready to go. And mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much- I, mean, I, I wasn't taking tally of who was supportive of what dates. Exactly. It was, it's a-, it's well, a I, would I would concur with that. Uh, my recollection is that I did bring up the June or the end of the second quarter. And I do remember uh, Council or Vice Mayor uh, Rogers stating that she believed that March 31st was a better date. So I do remember that okay. uh, conversation. Thank you. Ms. De La Rosa, would you say, do we have time? Um, let's say that, that, um, that President-elect Biden doesn't, uh, isn't able to put together a program 
that works for us even on a temporary basis where we where, where those employers of 500 and less um, do not get coverage with with tax credits do we have would we have time to put in a temporary order to um, between now and a, when a decision was made by president-elect Biden um, well uh, my understanding is with an urgency ordinance, we can put something on pretty quickly. So we would just have to do another urgency ordinance. Um, is, um, I think, I mean, is Jeff Burke on the call? Because uh, he might know a little bit more from the city, uh, city attorney's office. Um, but we can put something on the agenda pretty quickly. Um, and then um, I want to get Jeff's opinion on this, um, whether or not we can put something in the ordinance that would, um, again, if we tie it to whatever the feds do, um, we could automatic, potentially automatically extend, um, or we would just have to address it at that point. Jeff, do you, do you have an idea on that? So uh, I'm not quite sure I'm understanding uh, Council Member Sawyer's question. Are you asking how soon we could be nimble to get it on the agenda, or are you asking once, you know, how do we craft the ordinance in a way that allows for some flexibility? Well, let me let, let clarify a little bit. So the, the, the concern, um, I, I believe, of those council members that were looking for the tying the um, uh, tax credit with the, with the 500, with less than 500 employees, was that there was no, no harm, no foul on those, on those employers. Um, on the other hand, if 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 we are not able to extend that the, the, those tax credits, then we are placing potentially in jeopardy those employers that would then have to cover employees that they weren't covering before. So that's kind of so how and so that being being able to be nimble and being able to to, to give them in, in essence some protection and some so some um, uh, predictability. Uh, as to their obligation to their employees. So uh, let me throw this out. I'm not sure it's, it's answering your question, but you know we don't know what the feds are gonna do and we don't know how fast they're gonna be able to do it. I think our thinking, Raisa, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, we weren't planning to come back on the 26th with a draft ordinance, but the week after, I, I don't know if that's February 2nd, but one approach would be if you want to tie the under 500 to the tax credit, then one way to craft the ordinance would be to uh, have a, a, a March 31st end date for those employers under 500. And then if you want to go farther with the over 500, uh, you, you, you could do that. So you could, I, I, th I think you could craft the ordinance that way. And, you know, we have to kind of on a parallel track, see what's happening, um, you know, with Congress and what they enact and how quickly they do it, and you know, come back to council if that requires us to want to re revisit it. I appreciate that because I think there was what I what I heard was this desire that we cover all employees, and that and that that was the that was our goal, and and the the, the question was how much impact covering all employees would have on some of our smaller employers, um, especially those 50 and less that, where they would have to be uh, requesting um, special dispensation to, um, to be relieved from that re requirement. So the, the, but I, I think that the, at the end of the day, what we were looking for was to, to, cover, um, to cover all. Um, as, 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 at least for the time being, and hope that the federal government comes through with a program that that does um, uh, not only requires it, but helps those employers that are in jeopardy. I think on that matter, you know, the feedback that we're getting is that from small businesses or the less than 500, is that so long as there is a means for the one, one-to-one -one tax credit, um, this is what would make it tolerable. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so what Jeff is suggesting on that um, sort of uh, phased 
uh, expiration date, this would cover those businesses, uh, the, the less than 500 employees. We only have a dozen or so employers um, that are over 500. Um, and they're not, uh, they don't get the tax credit anyway. Um, right. So that later expiration date wouldn't matter to them. And okay. um, is it all right um, if I ask a question? Um, Please. I'm curious to know um, with the employers over 500, oh no, it's gonna slip from my mind, it's super technical. Um, um, hmm. You know what? It, it, Do you wanna come back? Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, Mr. Alvarez, any, any questions at, at this point? It's, it's, it's very, you know, th this is one of our, this was one of the issues that, that tends to take a lot of time to, to understand. And, I, and I, I don't pretend to understand all the nuances myself. So I, it's, it's really, it's, it tends to be rather technical and a bit of a moving target. No, I appreciate that. And uh, for, for myself, it's appreciate the staff for the work that they're doing. Uh, I did have a question about the 80 hours that were replenishable, if we were going to start them over or if we were going to continue on with whatever hours were left towards the credit of the employee. Yeah, that was one thing that um, that I did hear consensus on, that there would be no new addition. Like they, we wouldn't reset the clock on the 80 hours. Um, I think uh, if... Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, with, if the federal act, if Biden pursues something, that might reset it. I, but I don't know if that would be at the fiscal year um, or what that is. But at this point, we would not be asking for an additional 80 hours. So the bank it, would remain, there was no resetting of the, no, re, exactly. no resetting of the bank. And so if they used it, then they used it. They don't get another 80 hours. And that's the same thing with the offset. We weren't going to um, stop the offset. So the offset was if you, uh, if an employer is already giving um, this, um, you know, sort of above and beyond what they normally had, that was allowable for an offset. That was both in the federal act and in ours. Um, and so that would remain in effect. That, that's correct. If I may just add one thing to remind us all, and there are so many different laws here, uh, that's true that uh, that was the consensus, I believe, of the council not to increase the bank of 80 hours. But I want to remind us that if there is an employee out there and it's work related, whether they've used their bank of hours or not, the Cal OSHA regs will protect them if they're COVID positive or had close contact. So that, that, that's, a, that's a bit of a safeguard uh, uh, for employees. So I just wanted to mention that. And Jeff, um, just to be super clear, that Cal OSHA reg doesn't apply to all workforce sectors though, right? That's correct. Okay, so which ones does it leave out? It's healthcare and... So yes, um, uh, it, it does leave out uh, healthcare facilities. Um, those that are uh, already are under the aerosol transmissible disease protection program because supposedly they have safer workplaces and. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that Cal OSHA uh, regulation, one piece of it only was about pay, but a lot of it also was about a prevention plan. And, and I guess Cal OSHA felt, well, they already have the prevention plan. So yes, there is a, a, a segment that's not covered. Okay. Um, Raisa, um, I remember my question, which was, um, where do franchisees fit in the, did we ever decide if they're over 500 or under 500? Yeah. Uh... We decided that we didn't need to be definitive about that when we were discussing this because um, a single franchise owner would have less than 500 employees. Uh, and then when we swept up the over 500, even if we, if we decided to include them that way, uh, they would be included. So we never did address that specifically. In the minimum wage ordinance, franchise owners are over 500. Or they're, they're not over 500, sorry, it's a totally different. Um, uh, 25, I think. Yeah, it's, but they're considered large businesses. Okay. Okay. And if I, if I'm asking an additional question, uh, more for, for my clarification, on the one-on-one -on -one tax credits, uh, what federal protection or, or credits are already offered uh, to, to these under 500? And, and you stated that over 500, they don't have as many credits, am I correct? 
Yeah, specific to this, they don't, over 500, they don't have anything. Um, they, they're not offered a tax credit for this benefit. It's only those under 500. And again, um, we made it only at the higher limit of the $511 a day, but uh, they split it at the federal level. And, and these would all end on the March 31st uh, sunset date, right? Right, at this point, yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. So I, I guess the, the, the question is at this point, be, um, before I take public comment, if you have any, any more questions to help clarify the issue that we're dealing with, and then we'll take public comment and um, then come up with um, either a recommendation to council um, to um, adhere to their, um, to their recommendations on, as per last Tuesday. Um, or if we decide to recommend something different to them in, in for our next meeting with the council, um, or we can um, make no recommendation at all and let them, um, after some consideration um, of, couple, of a couple of weeks, allow them to um, kind of finalize the, the, the decisions um, that, are, that, are, that are before them. So let's, um, let, I'll ask for questions first. Any, any final or, yeah, it I mean, be final, but <laughs> questions. The other, the other thing that we, I would just want to know is like, do you, how, how do you feel about um, the two tiered cap? Because we only have the one. Do you, because we have the opportunity to go back to, to two tiers similar to, or what the, what the FSCRA did. Um, and that would address the issues of businesses. Um, so again, businesses really want to see that if, if they, with the less than 500, if they can get the one for one tax credit, they're good with it. Um, but that means that we would go back to that two tiered cap. Um, so that was the other question is, do you, how do you feel about that if we move forward at that, uh, with that level? Council members? Well, um, you know, the thing I was trying to hold back, I don't know if this is the right time to, um, to state preferences about this, just because of, public comment impending well oh, if, you'd, yeah. if you'd prefer just to, if, if you if a, que a clarifying question maybe you, you, you might want to wait until the public comment um, but you have more than more than um, able if you if you feel like making a comment now about your direction I am more than happy to hear it okay um, you know I think that um, I'd prefer to wait until after public comment just to um, get the public's input but um, you know I I'd be surprised if my recommendation changed as much from what I said in our last meeting. Okay. And and I, I, I agree with waiting for the public comment. Although I did have a, a question regarding the childcare in, in the coverage. Um, is, is there a limit for the time that we'll be covering uh, for the childcare? I noticed that in one through five, most of these are set with, and I'm sorry, I'm looking at the presentation that we received at city council. Uh, Number one through four pretty much states when the subject is, is well and healthy enough to return to work. Uh, number five, seeing that uh, schools are closed some indefinitely, how would this play into our, our, our program? Um, 80 hours. Yeah, it's just, it's cash just 80, 80 hours. hours. Yeah. And if I can just jump in here Thank for you. a second, you know, part of, part of the challenge that we find ourselves dealing with here is um, a pretty high level of, of compromise because we're trying to both get get the support of the of the of the community in 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 advancing some of our protections at the same time um, uh, be mindful of the impact of those protections for the employees and that's that's why this is so difficult because what we would love to be able to do of course is to cover every, everyone in, in all of their situations and not have a completely damaging effect on our small business owners. So it's the, the, this is the, um, the rub, if you will. The, this is the difficulty, is trying to balance those two and come up with a, um, something that is probably not too, not too pleasing to, both, to either side. And that's one of the challenges that we've been facing since we've started this conversation, which was some time ago. So let me jump to um, oh, uh, Mr. Alvarez. Did you get did you get your question answered as far as the 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 um, 
uh, the tiers of on the. I, I did. I did. Thank you. Okay, you bet. So let's let's move to um, public comment. Um, and any. Councilmember any, Sawyer, certainly. I, I, I just want to um, make a statement that the presentation will be uploaded immediately following this meeting. Um, I just got it done just before the meeting, so. Okay. I've seen enough then. Thank you. It's you, you have a lot on your plate, Stella Rosa. Um, so at, at this point, we can move to public comment. Um, are there, uh, so um, Eileen, do you have specific instructions or Ms. De La Rosa, are you offering, are there additional instructions for allowing the public to communicate with us? Um, no, it's um, the same, which was, oh, I lost those instructions. Um, okay. It's star nine, um, or you can use the raise hand feature um, or press star nine if you are on your phone. Okay, thank you. And and uh, is Eileen um, our host, or are you our host this this, this morning, Ms. Uh, Eileen is our host. So okay, uh, thank you. So Eileen, do we have any any requests for pub public public comment at this point? We do, Mr. Peter Rumble. Um, Mr. Rumble, I am uh, has changed it so that you can be unmuted. Um, and if you would wait one moment, um, I'll just ensure that you are able to see can you confirm that you are able to see the timer um on the screen and if you would like to introduce yourself please go ahead i can see the timer uh, my name is peter rumble i'm the ceo of the santa rosa metro chamber of commerce i wanted to thank uh, your council and your subcommittee for taking the time to have this conversation and certainly the conversation at your council uh, was uh, very thoughtful and nuanced and and i really appreciate your uh, willingness to dig into this issue uh, uh, to Council Member Sawyer's point uh, from a perspective of compromise. Um, I think that uh, just as uh, Ms. De La Rosa was mentioning before, uh, if we are um, having this conversation from the perspective of uh, allowing the availability of tax credits to guide decision-making process, that is a much more comfortable uh, conversation, I think, for uh, the business community, for the members of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, should public funds not be available to close these uh, safety net gaps that are uh, most certainly there from the federal perspective, then uh, allowing businesses to um, avail themselves of a tax credit while providing this benefit uh, is, a, I think, a nice uh, solution uh, to the problem. Of course, that doesn't cover uh, large employers, employers over 500, but for the vast majority of our employers in the county, again, guiding this decision-making process around the tax credit, um, while it's not a direct uh, source of public funds, it is the ability uh, on some level for public financing through the tax code. It certainly doesn't uh, make things better in the immediate term. If a business can't make it to tax filing, uh, uh, deadlines, then they're not going to be able to claim the credit. But um, if we're looking at this from a, a more uh, nuanced perspective, uh, I think that is a, a very wise uh, approach uh, to take. Protecting employees as well as allowing our small business community to avail themselves of some kind of benefit to help offset uh, this expenditure. So thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, the conversation. And if we as a chamber can support what I believe to be your council's uh, priorities in advocating at the federal level uh, for the new administration to provide expanded benefits, uh, count us in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rumble. Eileen, any, any other uh, public comment? There are no additional comments at this time. Okay, thank you very much. I'll bring it back to the council. Um, so um, what we have before us is, you know, we is what changes we might want to make, we might want to make, if any, to the recommendations or the, to the comments that came across from the council last Tuesday. Um, if there is uh, you know, something that we need to convey to the council that, that may change their minds on one or more issues, n now would be the time um, to make those um, recommendations. If any, <laughs> for for me, I believe that that 
I believe we had a consensus on the 80 hours. Uh, I believe that March 31st seems to be the date that most of us are agreeing on. I do believe that we do want to include all employees, although we understand that for those 500 or more, the coverage isn't as promising. Um, beyond that, I, I'm, I'm, an, I'm on a bowl of spaghetti, not just because my name is Eddie, right? <laughs> Well, I, I don't. I don't blame you, uh, Mr. Alvarez. And 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 in reality, because we have so few employers with 500 or more employees, and we there is a a, a presumption, whether it be accurate or not, that those l really large employers have the ability um, to cover those employees, uh, regardless of whether it's required. That is our hope. Um, so my thoughts are fairly similar to Mr. Alvarez. I would like to see the FFCRA extended um, in, in as much as that it would expire March 31. Um, our ordinance would ex expire March 31, that we would, to that end, continue working to while staff tracks um, legislation and, you know, hopefully we can um, get something out of this next administration. Um, but I think that given how things can go, sometimes we, we're gonna to need to be on it and paying attention um, to what happens and continuing to meet every couple of few weeks to have something ready so that we don't go through this process with an expired ordinance once again. I think that that's suboptimal. So, um, but the the nuances as far, or the policy details as far as I'm concerned are, would be that expiration date at the end of Q1 to line up with the tax credits, that it would um, be the, FFCRA, um, the frame of the FFCRA, but an expansion to include all employees in all sectors and all business sizes. So, um, so that um, the terms of it would apply to under 500, over 500 franchisees and non-franchisees. Although I think that um, that with the childcare thing that we probably need to talk about that for a minute in terms of how that would impact franchisees. Um, because I am wanting to line this up with um, with the benefits, uh, with the tax breaks or the tax credits, excuse me. And so if franchisees are exempted through the FFCRA, then they wouldn't be permitted. If I may, uh, if you're including all employers, then mm -hmm. whether you're a franchisee or not, doesn't matter. They're, they're going to be covered. Well, it, they'll be covered by us, but they won't. It, it depends on how the FFCRA defines um oh i see what you're saying and um, i'm scrambling to find um uh, how one city defined franchisee I, I think the answer is if they have more than 500 employees in the jurisdiction but i see the point you're raising with regard to the tax credit um, yeah i think um it there was a couple of different ways and it was um the one that i remembered was uh, franchisees if you have nationwide like it doesn't have to be within the jurisdiction it was anywhere um, right. then you were considered larger. Um, most franchise owners generally, you know, they have like one McDonald's or two or three, um, but it's far less than 500 employees. Right, but um, my question is, um, how does the FFCRA um, define them, um, franchisees for the purpose of access to the tax credits? My understanding is if that franchisee person, the, the franchisor has less than 500 employees, then they're, they're, then, then they're going to get the tax credit. Okay. If I'm a franchisor and I have more, then I won't. Okay. That's my understanding as well. Okay. Yeah. That's helpful. Um, and so, um, so all employ employers um, and all employees will be covered. Um, all sectors of the, um, the workforce will be covered. We should include the city we should not re-up the leave bank. Um, and then I would like to see the OSHA protections for employment while out for COVID related illness um, extended to cover employers um, who employ, who have a ATD po um, uh, policy. So, um, well, we can't touch the um, Cal OSHA thing and, and this OSHA, and this ordinance, I don't think. Um, I've noted that, but can I go back to something? So I just want to make sure that I understand this. So I think, yeah, overall, no, we're not going to reset the bank. It's, it is what it is. 
Um, I hear the March 31st deadline and I like, you know, that that's a nice firm deadline. Um, but when you say, uh, there's two questions I have. When you say the frame of the FFCRA, does that mean that you're good with the tiered caps so that they align with the, um, with the tax credits? I'm not a huge fan of the caps um, that FFCRA put out. I think that that's been made really clear heretofore, but I think that for purposes of offering businesses, um, you know, a shot at, you know, trying to not, you know, just have one more thing layered on, I think that that we ought to continue to have, we ought to implement a tiered system. Okay. And then when you also say the frame of the FFCRA, the other thing that we did to change it just a little bit was, uh, you know, the FFCRA says, you know, are caring for an individual subject to an order described in one or two, which was the, you know, caring for yourself because you're isolated or sick, um, or are caring for a child whose school or place of care is closed due to COVID-19. So we modified that to be any dependent. We essentially swept up everybody in the, um, in four and five, which are the caring for somebody else or caring for mm -hmm. a child. Now, do you want to go back to what the FFCRA is saying? Um, I mean, it's a nuance and I've not heard yeah. anybody, you know, do it otherwise. I, to me, it's sort of um, the same thing. Um, but I think the example for that labor gave us was your multiple families living in a house. They may not know each other. Do they? They may not even be caring for somebody, but they've been exposed. You know, it was sort of sweeping up more broadly, um, something that we haven't heard anything about, uh, but we did, we did sort of broaden the definition. So we're talking about exposure in addition to caring for, is that what you're asking me about? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that was the intent of what labor asked when, when they asked us to expand what it is to care for somebody, uh, okay. not just a child. So my, I had a different understanding of it. It doesn't mean I'm right. I understood that um, th that they wanted us to expand to include, um, you know, essentially any any dependent that you were taking care of. So I thought, um, and then, um, I mean, to my mind, you know, if you're out because you are uh, quarantining or you're out because you have COVID, it's all the same. You're out because of COVID. Um, and if we're going to only offer 80 hours, which is not a lot during, you know, a major pandemic, if you have a big family, this could well exceed that, I think, and we're not going to re-up the bank. I think that we can be generous with the terms of what the bank are in terms of um, who can use them because you only get it once. So it's not like someone's going to say, okay, my grandma, then my grandpa, then my kid, and then the other kid. I mean, it's, it's one and done. So um, I'm comfortable with being really broad in that and saying, you know, if you're quarantining, if you've been exposed, whatever the case is, um, if you need to take, take care of grandma or yourself, it's fine with me. Um, um, Jeff, can you confirm that that doesn't, to your understanding, alter the tax credit piece of it? I mean, I think I, I understand the point. It's so subtle. Um, I, I just don't see that being an issue. And, and I do see the issue that you're raising, Ray said. I think you're basically changing his or her child to a child who's school or to a dependent because it wasn't a child necessarily. It was, um, say, uh, the nursing home your parents are in um, is closed for COVID reasons um, and you're caring for them. The federal law specifically, um, I will actually know that that's, that, that's covered totally... under four, I think. Right. Yeah. No, I, I think it's such a subtle, small difference. I, 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 I understand the the nuance, but I think we're fine. So, but, um, so council member Fleming, does it matter if we state it the way the FFCRA is, or you're saying to state it the way we did, which covers anybody? I think we just broaden the language. I prefer to broaden it. Um, I wish we had touched on this policy point before public comment so we could hear um, from people, but when it comes to the council, we'll have another opportunity to hear from people, but um, yeah. The, the broader definition, please. Thank you. Which is the, which is the way it is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then that's I why have... this is policy so difficult is you can say the bones of the CRA, but not this and yes, that, and it just- Right. It's well, like so... jurisdictions and laws all layered on top of each other. 
Um, and Council Member, uh, Council Member Shea, I know that you have yet to give your opinion, but may I ask um, Council Member Fleming another question on her statement? Please, please. Um, okay, so then the other thing you said was um, have something ready to extend. Um, so assuming that, uh, so I guess the thing, the extension is if they don't, if the federal government doesn't act to extend, which I think they, they if they're gonna do something, they would probably do it with the tax credit sooner than later. Um, but is there, are you just saying have something ready would be just the exact same thing and then it would just picking be picking a new uh, date? Or are you suggesting, is it tied to the tax credit piece again? You know, I think that this has been such a moving target that the last time we met, um, you know, I didn't, I think it was maybe before the Georgia Senate races. And I think, you know, was really thinking that maybe we weren't going to actually have another stimulus package. I think that more specifically, what my ask is, is for us to continue to meet every while as necessary to track this, because my, my fear, it's not that the right, the, the truth is that I don't know what's next and I don't know what the right answer is. If the federal government comes in with a fantastic, you know, protection um, for both business and workers that starts April 1, um, that would negate any need for us to do anything. Um, but like everything, you know, it's about compromises and I wouldn't be surprised if what they come up with has some holes in it. Um, so, I think that we, we need to watch closely and um, be ready to do something, but um, but allow like allow for the opportunity for something better to come along with more um, financial protections. Okay, so we'll just leave it as um, as what it is, and then just track it, um, and we'll have it if we meet with this subcommittee um, monthly at this point, um, then we can have it. We can have those updates at that time. Okay, thank you. Okay. I think thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Fleming. And, and, and thank you, Raisa, because it's, you know, this, this is part of our challenge is the unknown. Um, so if we can, if we can, we'll make sure that we set another meeting. If, some, if something drastic happens between even before a month is up, um, where it would be helpful for you to have some um, recommendations uh, in addition to those that are coming to you this morning, um, then we could always set us another special meeting. Otherwise, we could um, we could wait until uh, February, and we still we still have some time. Although it's it seems to be going rather quickly. Um, so I, we're, we're it's it's clear that what we're looking for is protections and and uh, is, it, at, at the highest degree possible without without um, losing those tax credits. So. Um, um, Mr. Burke, did you, is there anything that we have recommended so far that would jeopardize um, those businesses under 500 employees from taking advantage of tax credits? So I'm, I'm not seeing anything and I do want to confirm my understanding. So we're, we're going to include the city, uh, no new leave, all employers, March 31st, and include the lower cap. So is that everybody's understanding that those five pieces? And that cat and 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 I I did this during the council meeting and I'm going to do it again. Could you reiterate the meaning of of including the lower cap? Sure. So for the lower cap, Raisa, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, and I don't know if you want to pull the slide up. But for items four and five, when you're caring for someone else, the lower cap dollar amount is uh, two thousand dollars, I believe. Yeah, two hundred dollars a day, two thousand dollars max uh, for caring for someone else, including your child, for child care reasons. Okay. And, and the last thing I'll mention, which is already in our ordinance, there is a limited small business ex exemption consistent with the federal law, which is if you have less than fifty employees, and um, your employee wants to use it only for the, the care of another. If that would cause one of three things, um, then you don't have to provide the 80 hours for that employee in that limited circumstance. If doing so would, would cause that business to fail financially, if that's like the key person, or if you wouldn't have sufficient staff to operate your business. So that's what's 
currently or what were what was in the federal law and what is in our ordinance. So I, and, I just wanted to confirm that 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 you want that to stay in. And Jeff, within that um, too, I think that they had to submit something to the federal government with you know since that doesn't exist anymore, there is nowhere to submit that. Well, the, they, they wouldn't be submitting it to the federal government in Santa Rosa because our ordinance would say um, you go to superior court. So they'd have to prove up their case. And if an employee was denied the 80 hours and the small employer was trying to carve out this exemption, then it would be a question of fact that the employer would have to show to a judge. Here's why I didn't do it. So although it is a bit messy, it's possible. Yes. Okay. I mean, this is this is part of that compromise issue that we're dealing with, you know, pr providing opportunity, even if that opportunity is difficult. Um, and I think that's that, that at least at this point, and I'm, I'm hoping, as is, um, I'm, I'm sure both of our council members here this morning, um, that that the federal government comes through and creates a great program that really takes the pressure off um, these valuable employees that are um, so challenged right now, you know, across the country. So um, thank you, Mr. Burke. Um, is the, so um, Ms. De La Rosa, are you, uh, do you have what you need um, today, this morning? Yes, um, I do, uh, because I think that, that uh, uh, Mr. Burke's um, summary got it. We're including everybody. We have an expiration of the 31st of March. Uh, we have two tiers, cities included, and there's no need, new leave bank. Um, and all other elements of our ordinance remain the same. That, okay. That's good. That's it. So in essence, just for clarification, did anything, so what changed from last Tuesday's council meeting? I'm not hearing a lot of change. Well, the two things, the two main areas that we didn't have, that I felt we didn't have consensus when I looked at it again, was the expiration date um, yes. and the um, compensation rate. Okay, excellent. And there was some discussion, well, it was a lot of questions about the um, taxes, but um, there was some question about, uh, or some discussion, I should say, about healthcare and where we are right now. Um, with employees and stuff like that. So this, this um, clarification is super helpful. So when we put this together and we get it on the agenda, it will be, it's slated for February 2nd. Um, we would do it as a, rec it's recommended by the Economic Development Subcommittee. Um, and are you good with that then? Yes, council members, are we, are, we, are we clear and good on this recommendation? Yes. Yes, okay. Just excellent. Well. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate that and we'll hope the federal government, our, our new sensitive and, and um, uh, exciting federal government uh, comes up with some really great programs to help our employees and our employers as well. Um, and they're all um, interdependent. Excellent. So Ms. De La Rosa, um, what is the, since I don't have the agenda in front of me, what is our next item? Well, our next item is an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the um, Economic Development Subcommittee. So this is a special meeting of the Economic Development Subcommittee. Um, since COVID started, we have not had a meeting of the subcommittee in uh, a long time. I mean, it's been over a year. Um, and so uh, I wanted to go through the cadence of it um, and review some of the objectives because we're transitioning from the Economic Recovery Task Force into this now Brown Acted uh, public meeting. Um, and so I wanted to go through those things with you. Okay, excellent. Let's, let's hear it. Okay, well, so um, we were meeting weekly uh, with the Economic Recovery Task Force. Um, we met on Tuesdays at 10. Uh, and I wanted to see, uh, and when we had the Economic Development Subcommittee, we used to meet, uh, we ended up meeting every other month, uh, depending on what we had going on. Um, so I wanted to see if Tuesdays monthly would still work for you at 10 o'clock, uh, number one, um, if we keep it to a monthly cadence, but we can also call special meetings as uh, new things come up. Because uh, again, uh, with the task force, we were pretty nimble because we met weekly. We can still do that with special meetings, but for the ongoing meeting, uh, it would be monthly. And what? And so could you restate the time? Uh, Tuesdays, 
So let's see, I guess we'd have to pick uh, a Tuesday um, of the month. Um, so it would be Tuesday at 1030 once a month. Um, and we could pick the first, second, third. I mean, is there a preference on which Tuesday? I think um, the second Tuesday. Right I don't at, at this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't have a preference at this point. Um, Council members, do you have, is there, does it matter? Do, do, do you have any conflicts with other Tuesday? I mean, Tuesday being is, is we're, we're majorly conflicted because we have a council meeting, but um, other than that, does does any Tuesday work for? Yeah, you know, just, I got clarification from Mylene um, that it okay. was the second Tuesday of the month uh, previously. I mean, the second week of the month. So we could do the second Tuesday of the month um, and the reason why we had chosen Tuesdays was so that you could have just one long day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's, it's already, you know, it's obligated. Um, and if, if, if we start, and you're suggesting, did, did you say you're suggesting 1030, continuing with a 1030? At 10 o'clock, we had, uh, I uh, mistakenly set this one at 1030, but I'm fine at 10 or 1030. Uh, we okay. had done 10 o'clock for the economic recovery task force. Well, you know, probably the on the earlier side, the better, because sometimes we have closed sessions that begin um, pretty early in the afternoon, uh, like one o'clock. So um, the more time we have, like if we have an hour and a half, if we set it at 10, it goes to 1130, um, having an hour and a half between the potential of a closed session meeting at one probably is is beneficial to the council members. And would you guys agree with that? Uh, I, I agree with that, yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, a, little, a little bit of so, more time in between the memes. There you go. So what we can do is we'll, we will set those at, at 10 o'clock um, and uh, on the second Tuesday. And if we find that there are some reasons to make a change in that, then we will give the proper notice and make a change in the, in the timing and the day. Um, but for, for the time being, um, we'll, we will just uh, allow that to, to be our set time if that's ex acceptable. And so at the next meeting, um, what we'll do is um, just have a check in about uh, what the federal policies are for paid sick leave, of course. Um, but I wanna go over as well, the items that we were reviewing or that were under consideration in the task force uh, and to also set the objective. Cause the objective of the task force is, uh, is different. Obviously that was a recovery task force. It's different than this one. Um, so we'll, we'll be setting those things and reviewing the items. Um, the other thing is um, where I think we were incredibly successful with the task force is we were able to accept uh, questions and considerations um, and keep a running list so that we can understand what we were doing um, or where uh, people had an interest. For example, Council Member Tibbetts, you know, had a question of something that we had reviewed in the task force. So we can keep that running list um, and allow it to be open for consideration from other uh, members. Um, and so that's where I was hoping to try to keep a merger of what used to be the subcommittee uh, and what was the task force moving forward. Would that be best done um, by by you looking at those two lists and then coming back to for so for recommendations at our next meeting or even one after that? Do you do you have enough time to put because there were that we had quite a list as I remember, and um, so I just want to be able to give you enough time to be able to consider um, those two individual lists. Yeah, so um, the next meeting would be uh, Tuesday, February 9. Um, and I have still, obviously, I kept that list on our agenda. Um, so I'll put that together and I'll make it available um, in advance. Um, it'll be posted, but I'll give it to you guys as well. Um, and uh, I think it'll start, I think that'll be the basis of our discussion. Are we still on the right track for what we want to discuss? Are there other things that come up? Um, what's missing? Uh, and then um, we can sort of select like we did during the task force, what, what are what staff gonna be working on or what, what's our objective for the next meeting? That sounds good. And so um, if we could have um, all of us, all three of council members um, looking at that list, being our, making our own, cons own suggestions and considerations on what we think is, is uh, what there are priorities may be because we will also be up um, to consider the priorities of the council um, and as during goal setting. I'm not sure what that's looking like this year, um, but um, 
we will be discussing that as a full council. And then, um, so if we can have a, a conversation that recommendations from this subcommittee to the council when they are considering um, priorities for economic development. So for the, during our, our annual um, conversation. Yeah, because I think that's set for mid-February. And to be clear, what I'm going to send you from the task force is really focused on recovery stuff. So we're going to okay. have to expand it to the other um, the other elements. I did um, write up an objective that um, can be tweaked, but really uh, the difference from recovery to now is this objective, as I've stated it, is to empower economic stability and create economic growth and opportunity for Santa Rosa through policies and programs that encourage job retention and creation, broad economic prosperity and great places. So placemaking essentially. So it broadens the task force's role into uh, broader economic uh, development activity. Yeah, I love that language. Okay. That's good. Council, any final, are we, are we at the, since I don't have the agenda in front of me, are we at the end of our agenda? That is the end of okay. the agenda. Um, I thought so. For the announcement of the February 9th, uh, the second Tuesday, February 9th, next meeting. Okay. Council, any other questions before we uh, adjourn? I think you have to open up to public comment on the second item. Oh, on the second item, I do. Uh, oh, the, sec the, the timing. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. So, um, uh, let's open it up to public comment. Eileen, do we have any 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 public comment on the issue around our timing, our our scheduling? There are no hands raised at this time. Thank you very much. Um, if there are no final questions or comments, we I believe can adjourn this meeting. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you all very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, that's a cool sweater, Councilman Sawyer. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you called me to tell me what kind of like, what kind of pattern to wear this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you.